Now let's look at encryption and integrity protection at the radio level or at the access stratum layer, so between the UE and the E node B. Um, here again, we have the ciphering key and the integrity protection key for the RRC messages. And um, let's take an RRC message, which we show here as data. It's slightly different at the access stratum level. At the access stratum level, the first thing that they do is that first it does an integrity protection on the RRC message itself and computes the message authentication code that it appends to the data. Then it takes this data and the message authentication code and encrypts it. So by using the, the ciphering key, it ciphers it by using the ciphering key and it creates a basically a random number and it XORs it and out you get is an encrypted data and the message authentication code, which then is received by the E node B. And now the E node B follows the reverse process. So first it decrypts it using the ciphering key and uh, and, a, and a decryption algorithm, which is the same to create a random number that gets XORed. The good thing about XORing is if you XOR with the same vector out, you get is the original, which is the data and the message authentication code. And then you do the integrity protection algorithm, figure out where you compute the expected MAC, you compare it to the MAC that is provided. If this is true, then this, uh, message can only have been sent by the UE because the integrity protection key is the same and, and things are matching out over here. And once this, is, once this matches out, then you can use this data and, and go ahead and process the data. So in the access stratum, it is first integrity protect. After you integrity protect, you encrypt, which is the reverse of what was happening at the network access stratum, which is you first encrypt and then you integrity protect. Um, at least I am not a security expert, but from reading at least a lot of some of the security um, information, this is apparently much more secure than the, than the sequence of doing integrity protection and encryption. And I'm still not 100% sure why the access, access stratum does uh, integrity protection first and then goes ahead and does encryption. It may have to do with uh, efficiency of computing of, of fixed length messages at the PDCP level. I mean, all of this encryption and integrity protection in the radio is being done at the PDCP level which uh, you kind of, uh, if, you, if you look at it, RRC sits on top of PDCP, then that sits on top of radio link control, which does the, um, d does the retries and uh, does both the acknowledge mode and the unacknowledge mode, and then below that sits the MAC and then the, the file layer, right? I mean, so this is, this is, this is the layer at which uh, the security is, is being done. So integrity ciphering and integrity protection is being done at the PDCP level. And it may have to do with efficiency of fixed length, of doing encryption, decryption of fixed length messages, but, um, I, I, but but that so so that that is the the key point here is to keep in mind that uh, that at the access stratum the integrity protection is done first and then then encryption. All right. Um, so now, as again as we had looked at in the NAS layer, we have the encryption does have additional parameters that goes into it, and we have the count, which again is a thirty two bit number. And here, the way the count works is that the sequence number at the PDCP level or the sequence number is actually a five bit number. So in order to get to the 32 bits, basically it's there is something called a hyper frequency H H F hyper frame number, which is similar to what's the overflow and it is so every time the sequence number goes beyond five bits or five bits is is 32 so every time it goes um, beyond 32 the 
hyper frame number gets incremented by one and this hfn is a counter that is kept both at the e node b and at the ue so every time you go beyond 32 you go to 33 you increase hfn by one you you add plus one to it so next time you get to 64 you get to 65 this becomes plus one so it becomes two so so this kind of an overflow count which is called uh, a hyper frame number in at the rrc level is used for coming up to 32 bits here again the main idea being you don't want to be creating random numbers same random number twice and direction is again zero for uplink and one for downlink so when the ue sends it it's basically zero when the um, e node b sends a message rrc message the direction bit is set to one uh, the bearer ID is uh, is a five bit number, as we said, and bearer ID has to do with the either uh, if it is a signaling radio bearer one, then the bearer ID is equal to actually SRB minus one. So the bearer ID is is set to zero. If signaling radio bearer is two, the bearer ID is set to set to one. So, so SRB ID minus one. Similarly, for data radio bearers, which also go from one to 10, if it is one, then the bearer ID is zero. And if data radio bearer two, then the bearer ID is one. Bearer ID used for the encryption algorithm is one. So essentially, the bearer ID is either SRB ID minus one or DRB ID minus one. DRB ID minus one so so that's what the bearer id being used in this encryption algorithm is and the length is basically the length of the data plus the message authentication code that that's um, that that is being provided and that's how you generate uh, the random number that is basically used to encrypt the data so th so that's the encryption decryption uh, part of it and similarly for the integrity protection part of it we have the same thing except the length is not there because the mac is a fixed length four byte number that comes out and uh, and if we do look at the pdcp message so if if this is the rrc message which is which is having a pdcp header which has got a five bit count you first do an integrity protection, you come up with the MAC or the message authentication code, and then you take the entire data and the message authentication code and you cipher it. And this whole ciphered message is then, then sent over the radio, right?